when I read that book eventually that that changed my life. That showed me that there's a way to accumulate wealth. How can I do it as an average person, right? Because I didn't think it was something that the average person could do. Yeah. And Reginald Lewis is the Jackie Robinson of business and most of us don't know his name, Thanks. right? I was amazed, I was in love when you told me, like, yeah, I know Reginald Lewis. I was like, let's go. Yeah. I was like, I knew Ash would know him. Mm -hmm. And it inspired me so much because I, was, I came from a place where people were buying houses and I was like, yo, how you got $10,000 to put money down on it? Like to, at one time you got $10,000? I wanted my business, I wanted to make sure I'm not self-employed. Right. I had to make sure that I was a business owner at the time. So I put process systems and people in place so that the business was running uh, without me having to be so involved. I was still the CEO, I was staring in the direction of the business, but I wasn't in the day-to-day -day of everything. Mm -hmm. By doing that, it made my business attractive to another investor. Mm. The investor came in and was like, yo, I'll buy those two brands from you. And I created two brands and he was like, he'll buy it from you. Well, I buy cash flowing businesses that's been in, in existence for multiple years. It has a rich history. I do it through LBOs, leverage buyouts, where I can incur debt in the business to pay for the acquisition and no money comes out of my pocket. Now that doesn't mean absolutely no money because I, I pay my lawyers. I pay my financial team to do some financial due diligence, but the cost of the business itself, no money came out of my pocket because the business is gonna pay it back. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. I know you wanna watch this next video, but listen, if you are an entrepreneur, business coach, business consultant, or a small business owner who has a story and wants to learn how to create multiple streams of income from your story, I need you to text me right now. My book to 646-687-4152. That is my personal number. I have been an author for over 12 years. I've written 10 books. Four of them have been bestsellers, and I've sold over 100,000 books. But I've also helped a lot of my clients take their expertise and put it into a story, then create multiple streams of income from that. So I wanna help you do the same thing. So text my book to 646-687-4152. All right, let's go back to the video. So welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. Listen, is entrepreneurship through acquisition the answer to building wealth? That is the question that everybody is asking. Well, maybe not everybody's asking, but that's the question that I'm asking <laughs> today. Instead of going through the ups and downs of becoming a founder and starting something from scratch, our next guest decided he would focus on entrepreneurship through acquisition, that is, buying an existing business that already has cash flow. Successful entrepreneur, investor, mentor, an inspirational speaker, and known by many as Business Builder Bees. Welcome my brother, Bajorn <laughs> Hendricks in the building. What's up, brother? Let's go, bro. Let, I love your energy, yes, man. Sir. I yes, love sir. your energy. It's infectious, man, Yo, but it's man. a pleasure to be here, man. Oh, man, like this is way, this is so overdue. Yes, right? sir. First of all, it's so overdue. We've been trying to set this interview up for such a long for real. time. <laughs> um, but you know what I'm saying? You're a busy bee, yes, right? Sir. <laughs> so we had to we had to make it happen. But but I, like I absolutely love this topic yes, um, because you know I, you know behind the scenes you know I was I was telling you my story of uh, my desires to be a billionaire, right? So yeah. um, you know when, when when I was coming up, you know I'm a hip hop head, so I've listened to you know you know or, or I've read the Source magazine, Double XL, mm. uh, you know, but but I was also always interested in business, right? So I've mm. you know I was packing bags at eight years old, making money. Mm. I was um, selling mixtapes and t-shirts as a, uh, you know, as a vendor on 125th Street growing up. Nice. And so I've always been interested in money. And so I used to read Black Enterprise as a, yeah, as a teenager. Yeah, me too. Um, and I remember reading about Reginald Lewis. Um, and, and, you know, and that gave me the idea. I was like, man, yeah, this is a businessman who was a billion. I said, yo, I want to be a billionaire. Mm. Uh, and I'm going to do it through leverage buyouts. Just for me and I didn't even know what it was at the time. Yeah. But I was like, I'm going to do it through leverage buyouts. Fast forward, I meet you. Um, and and you are the key to that. Like, that's that's what you do. Yes, sir. 
And I think that um, our community has been in the hustle mode so much. Our community has been in the start from scratch mode so much yep, yep, that this yep. is probably going to be one of the most important episodes I ever do to stop our community from always hustle, 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 grind, grind, grind. Let mm. oh, I need to, I need to get my money up and all that stuff because you have the like you have the key to becoming a multi-millionaire, even a billionaire, billionaire. Yep. by not having to start from scratch. Like you want your forty acres and and your mule, mm. like like. Business acquisition is that. Oh, bro. So we about to get spicy. <laughs> but before we get before we get there, yeah, yeah. for those who don't know, who's Bjorn Hendrix? Who is Business Bees? All right. So so you got, I got to pronounce it right. It's Bjorn. Bjorn. It's, it's a Swedish name, yes, even though I'm not Swedish. I'm from Jamaica. Yes, sir. Um, well, I'll, well, I'll go on. I already know. Yeah, so, so I'm from Mandeville, Jamaica. Grew up in Jamaica. Grew up in Mandeville. And then also grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Moved to Brooklyn. Actually moved to Brooklyn in like third grade. And I was always made fun of my accent. And I was like, I'm done. I'm gone. I want to go back home. So I went back home to Jamaica. And then I came back like uh, middle school. And then, you know, finished out high school there. Now, you said so many things, man. Um, I, I don't even know where to start, but a lot of things happened to me first that got me to where I am. And uh, one of the biggest things was um, uh, I used to read books like from billionaires as well. The Road Ahead, I think, was a book by Bill Gates, and it had a, a, a CD-ROM in it that I had put in my computer, and then it showed a virtual walkthrough of the house he was building. And I was like, oh, I want that. I was like, how, how did, what's going on? And that, that got me into technology, really. Um, but then something major happened in high school. I was a little knucklehead, you know, just like running with the Jamaican crew, running with different mini gangs in Brooklyn and stuff. And I came home one day from, a, um, uh, I had a job at a sneaker store on Flatbush. And I came home and I walked into, and, and I don't even tell this story, bro. And you know, I, I told someone, I told my community about two weeks ago and I started crying and everything. And it took me like hours to stop. Wow. So I don't even know why I'm gonna say it now, but yeah. I figured I'm gonna start, not let it be repressed. Let me say what happened because it was a big turning point in my life. Yeah. Um, I walked in, we lived in an apartment building, came home from work, walked in and there was like a mess right in front of me. And I was like, mom, what are you doing? What's going on? And then somebody comes from the back with a gun to my head. Wow. And I, like I said, I was a little knucklehead person too, so I had something on me. And I was like, well, I ain't going out like a fool, blah, blah. In my mind, this is going through. I'm like, I right, just waiting for the right moment. I'm going to show what's happening, you know. And then I hear my mom in the background, and they had her tied up in the, in the room with her cousin, and it devastated me, wow. you know. And I had to, I just stopped. Yeah. Um, Fast forward a little bit, when the police came, because they got away, they took, you know, they robbed the whole place. And when the police came, I was looking through the, uh, the book of, you know, does any of these people look familiar, trying to pinpoint someone. At least 20 to 25 of my friends was in the book. Wow. And that was like, yeah, I'm on the wrong path. Mm. Something ain't right here. You know, I could be in that book too, mm. next. Yeah. So I went, to, I went to school, I think this was like, summer of my junior year or something. And I went and I never thought about college, nothing. And the only college experience I had was through the show, A Different World, mm. you know, spin off of the Cosby show. And I was like, oh, that's where I learned about stepping and fraternities. And I was like, damn, this looks kind of cool. And I went to high school senior year that first day and I spoke to this lady, Miss Tansky. She was like the senior advisor and I told her, She'll tell you, if she tells the story, she's going to say, I came to her and was like, I'm a scumbag and I want to change my life. That wasn't the words that I used, right, Ms. Tansky, right. but it, right. was the, it was the message. I was like, I want to change my life. And, I, you know, she got me uh, ready to take the SAT, ACT, start applying to colleges. I actually went to college, got two degrees, um, uh, two bachelors, uh, uh, minor in micromolecular biology, all types of stuff that's like, damn, what the hell? It came from nothing. But it was Reginald Lewis. Yeah. When I read that book eventually, that, that changed my life. That showed me that there's a way to accumulate wealth. How can I do it as an average person, mm -hmm. right? Because I didn't think it was something that the average person could do. Yeah. And Reginald Lewis is the Jackie Robinson of business mm -hmm. and most of us don't know his name, Thanks. right? I was amazed, I was in love when you mm -hmm. told me, like, yeah, I know Reginald yeah. Lewis. Yeah. I was like, let's go. Yeah. I was like, I knew Ash would know him. Mm -hmm. And it inspired me so much because I, was, I came from a place where people were buying houses and I was like, yo, how you got $10,000 to put money down on it? Like to, at one time right. you got $10,000? Right. 
I couldn't figure it out. And nobody would give me no information. So, you know, I came from those years of Encyclopedia Britannica, mm -hmm. no Google. Yeah. I couldn't look up nothing. Nice. I had to go find the book and see what was there. And everything just changed once I read that book, Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I'm actually in contact with his, his daughter and his wife now, well, one of his daughters, Leslie. And she, you know, she told me that my father would be so proud of you, Bees. And again, that made another tear come to wow. my eye, man, wow. because that was a mentor to me yeah. that he didn't know he was my mentor, right. but it was the only black male figure that I had as a mentor, really. And, you know, it changed everything. Now, I went into corporate America, so I had a little bit of a head start slightly, right? Um, you can't get into mergers and acquisitions. Robert Smith said, said it on an EYL interview. He said, it's an apprenticeship game. You got to apprentice to somebody that's doing it to really learn it, et cetera. So I worked in uh, corporate America. I worked at Microsoft. I worked at Accenture and some other firms. And I was sent into Fortune 500 companies and government institutions in order to help them scale with process systems and people. So I was always focused on scaling multiple businesses, uh, being more efficient. I have a ton of certifications from that time. Like I'm a Lean Six Sigma black belt. I'm an ITIL expert. I'm a project management professional, Prince Two, all of these things. But then I saw the, the invoice mm. for what like Microsoft was charging the client to send me in. And I was getting paid good, mm -hmm. you know, relatively. It was good. 200K. Okay. I was okay. like, okay, this is not bad. You know, yeah. we, we good. I was chilling. Yeah. But I wasn't creating no wealth. Right. So when I saw that they were charging two million to send me in, mm. and I'm only getting paid two, and that's for every client, right. and I'm only getting paid 200K a year, and I, mm. I deal with multiple clients throughout the year, I was like, okay, hold up. Mm. I got to take control of my life. And I, I left Microsoft the last eight years. I've been a private investor and entrepreneur, but I say investor more than entrepreneur. Mm. I built businesses from scratch. But as an investor, I can work above the business instead of on the business as a CEO. Yeah. Most people believe that the CEO, I want to be the CEO. That's like the magic word. Yeah. But the CEO is just another job. Right. So uh, another book that shaped my life was Rich Dad, Poor Dad mm. by Robert Kiyosaki in mm -hmm. the cash flow quadrant. Mm -hmm. Right. And knowing that, yeah, you're an employee, you're working in the business, you're trading time for money. You're self-employed, mm. you're working in the business, you're still trading time for money. Mm. But you got to go to business owner. Right. Now you're working on the business. Yeah, that's cool. But I want to be the investor, yeah, investor yeah. working above it, and I hire the CEOs. Mm. And that's been the start of everything for me, man. Yeah. It's been an amazing journey. Yeah, no, I, lo I, I love that. And, and I mean, it's just so much um to a, in, unpack there mm. um because i think that and and specifically when i think about our community um i think because you know we didn't come from money yeah. um we don't have access to you know people who have money um that we you know we 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 believe what we're taught yeah. right and so we're taught go to school get mm. a job mm. work hard for the money then we followed that for a, you know a, you know forty years, thirty years, however long we we followed that. Yeah. Then somewhere somebody woke up and was like, ah, that's not it. Yeah. Then we were like, you know what? Nah, forget forget working for somebody. You know, work for yourself, yeah. right? Yeah, and so now yeah. we 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 shift into entrepreneurship and we're like, nah, you gotta work, yeah, grind right. hard. Mm -hmm. No, you know what I mean? Team no sleep, mm -hmm. right? Like you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so we started we started from that perspective, and then I think that we're just shifting into another perspective that's truly about that wealth yeah. where we're learning like, yo, you could really become wealthy by not having to exchange time for money. Yep. Yep. But there's like a, like, there's like a 5.0 or 10.0 version of that, mm. which is what you do. Yeah, right. Yeah, because yeah. not only can you not exchange your time for money, but matter of fact, you don't even have to have money. Like, like, what, like, what's, what's your, what's your, uh, what's your elevator speech? Because you say, you say it. It's like so, like you say it. But if somebody say, hey, hey, you know, hey, bees, what do you do? What do you do? <laughs> well, I buy cash flowing businesses that's been in, in existence for multiple years. It has a rich history. I do it through LBOs, leverage buyouts, where I can incur debt in the business to pay for the acquisition, and no money comes out of my pocket. Now, that doesn't mean absolutely no money because I pay my lawyers, I pay my financial team to do some financial due diligence, mm. but the cost of the business itself, 
no money came out of my pocket because the business is going to pay it back. And I get to, it's the best investment that you could get mm. into because you get to see all the, 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 the details up front. Mm. You know what you're getting yourself into. Mm. You can reduce your risk as much as possible. You can never eliminate risk. Mm. You can't eliminate it. Because yeah. you could acquire a business today and then, I don't know, all of a sudden a global pandemic hits and everybody, everything shuts Facts. down. Facts. But that still affects the person that built the business and the person that acquired the business. So it's not like it was a problem of the acquisition. But you know one thing I want to say too, though, that you mentioned, our community especially is just kind of programmed to work hard. Um, I used to ask this question a lot. Every time I went to speak somewhere, I would say, by show of hands, if I could give you $100 million or you earn by yourself $20 million, which would you prefer? Mm. You'd be shocked at the amount of people that say, I'd rather earn it myself mm. so nobody can say they gave me mm. nothing, blah, blah. How about I give you the 100 million and then you go make it into a billion? And right. then you can say nobody gave you nothing too, Max. right? Why would we turn down the head start? Mm. Why would we turn down the help that so many other communities get mm. and they take advantage of yeah. and build amazing things? Yeah. You mentioned um, uh, 40 Acres and a Mule. Mm. I'm acquiring businesses that black people couldn't walk into. Mm. 50 years ago. Yeah. I'm acquiring businesses that are 100 years old right now. Yeah. The people who got the 40 acres in a mule mm -hmm. built businesses. They, they uh, bought real estate. They passed it down maybe to their kids. And then maybe those kids are the current baby boomers right now. Mm -hmm. And those baby boomers figured, oh, well, I'll also pass it down to my kids. Yeah. But then they have no successes. The kids of this generation don't want it. Right. So I'm swooping in and taking my reparations. Mm -hmm. I ain't waiting for nothing. Mm. I don't need the 40 acres and a mule because I found a way to take it and we all could do it. Mm. It's powerful, man. Yeah. It's powerful, but we have to change our mindset first. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and, and, and so, so take, take on that journey. Like, how did you, how did you get started, right? So you, you're, at, you're at Microsoft. You're, you're doing mergers and acquisition. You're learning the game. Like, what, um, you know, like, 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 what was that first step you took yeah. that got you from entrepreneurship to now you know, doing entrepreneurship through acquisition. Mm. So when I left Microsoft, I really didn't know what the hell I was going to do. I don't know if I could say hell on here. Nah, you can say hell. <laughs> you can say shit. Whatever. You can say whatever. <laughs> I didn't know what the hell I was going to do. Yeah. And But I was fortunate. I, yeah. I did have some savings that could carry me on for a year. I sold some uh, uh, some stock I had. I also cashed out my 401k, even mm -hmm. though everybody was telling me don't do it. Yeah. But I've, I don't know. 400x what was whatever was in my 401k mm -hmm. at the time since then mm -hmm. um and i started in e-commerce mm -hmm. i was doing like amazon fba and i was selling and i made my first million dollars through it and i was like yo this changes everything mm -hmm. and i was a little complacent too because i was like okay i made it to a million now i don't need nothing more right mm -hmm. at the time um but because of my background on process systems and people mm -hmm. in corporate america I wanted my business, I wanted to make sure I'm not self-employed. Right. I had to make sure that I was a business owner at the time. So I put process systems and people in place so that the business was running uh, without me having to be so involved. I was still the CEO, I was staring the direction of the business, but I wasn't in the day-to-day -day of everything. Mm -hmm. By doing that, it made my business attractive to another investor. Mm. The investor came in and was like, yo, I'll buy those two brands from you. Mm -hmm. I created two brands and he was like, he'll buy it from me. I was like, okay, let's go. Mm -hmm. So he bought it for me. He brought it, for, bought both of them from me, and I was like, well, damn, I'm familiar with the world of M and A. Mm -hmm. I just sold two businesses. Mm -hmm. I need to buy some too, and I didn't have it completely locked down on how the LBOs work to completely zero out of pocket at the time. But I was getting them, you know. 80% out of my pocket, 80% zero out of my pocket, yeah. right? And then just coming up with 10 or 20% or something. And then I found the traditional way of acquiring a business is you go to the bank, just like how you would go buy a property, real estate, right? You go to the bank and you get the SBA 7A loan. It's the business acquisition loan. Mm. Um, I did that first and, you know, tried it. It was cool. It's a, it's, I hate dealing with the government and all the loan applications and stuff. So then I started saying, nah, I'm going to take it the full LBO style. And then I made my first full zero out of my pocket acquisition, completely zero out of my pocket, because even the SBA loan is kind of zero out of my pocket. The SBA is covering it, right? Yeah. But completely zero out of my pocket, incurred all the debt in the business, mm -hmm. 
and it was enough cash flow in the business to service that debt, plus pay me some money, plus to grow wow. the business. And wow. it, it was a wrap since then, man. Wow. So let, so let me, let me let me let me let me just get get clear, right? So leverage buyout, and mm -hmm. and so when we when we say leverage, we mean debt. Yes. Right, and so yes. we're leveraging. So, or, or we're leveraging something. Like we're, we're leveraging, leveraging the business. The business. So, so here, here's the thing. The first thing you gotta remember is that the United States of America is not a country; it's a corporation. Mm. Right. So the reason I say that is because the laws are written to benefit corporate entities. Mm. So we have to take advantage of what can be done with corporate entities. Mm. People like Donald Trump, I ain't getting political. I don't know who you like, who you don't like. Yeah. I don't like either side. Yeah. I don't care about none of them. Yeah. But people like Donald Trump, I'm going to learn from him mm -hmm. because he uh, just the, uh, last year, I think it was, buried his ex-wife on one of his oh, golf yeah, yeah, courses yeah, yeah. because he learned that it will protect him against taxes. He can't be seized by the government. This was after all his stuff got seized at Mar-a-Lago. Right. And now he went and did this. But all he was doing was leveraging the, the concepts and the rules that are in the laws that are for corporate entities. Mm -hmm. He leveraged it to his benefit. Right. So I do the same thing. I leverage the financial system by getting debt into businesses and having the, business, the businesses service that debt to pay for me to buy cash flow, mm. right? So I'm getting cash flow without having to do anything on my end and I'm not operating in it because I'm not the CEO. Mm. I'm not buying myself a job. Mm. I'm buying cash flow. All right. And so, and so let, 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 let's say just to, just to like simplify it, um, Somebody owns ABC Corporation. Mm. Uh, with ABC Corporation, it's been around 50 years. Mm. Um, they're making $10,000 a month, you know? Um, in profit? So, in profit, right? Mm -hmm. so, they, right. so they cash flow and Lilo, he was like, mm. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> I, won't, I won't wake up for 10, uh, 100,000, all right? Right, but for, if, yes, for yes, illustration yes, purposes, for illustration you know purposes, what I'm saying? Let's go. Illustration purposes. It's making $10,000 a month um, in, in profit, um, but the business has assets, so it owns mm. the building that it operates in, mm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and the building that it operates in, it's in, it's in Harlem, New York. Um, so that building is worth about five million dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and you know the biz, you know they, they're selling, you know they're selling the business for, I don't know, ten million. I don't know, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, with leverage buyout. Because it, it's having the cash flow, mm -hmm. explain how, and, and you could give me a better example, but yeah. explain how somebody could take a business like that, yeah. has owns a build, b, b, you know, building, yeah. has cash flow coming in. Um, how can you borrow against that business <laughs> to buy the business yeah. to now be able to um, gain access to that cash flow? That that that's already in that business. All right, so so Ash, I love Ash, man. He, he wants to go right into the sauce. So yes, go, I'm gonna explain this. Now. I'm, I'm gonna change the scenario a little yep. bit because whenever I see a business that has uh, that one was low cash flow, mm -hmm. but high on the real estate side, I always carve out the real estate first. I say, hey, let's let's just look at the business alone first. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe give me an option to buy the the real estate. I'm locked in for like two years, and mm -hmm. you give me that option within the two years to buy it. First right of refusal, in essence, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'll use the business assets to buy it later. Mm -hmm. But let's, let's, let's say it was a $1 million company. It costs $1 million to acquire it. Um, the first thing that I do in every single deal is called seller financing. Mm. If the person won't give me any seller financing, I'm not going to be in that deal. Mm. Seller financing is also called uh, owner carry. It means that the owner is carrying a note and I pay them over time. Mm. Rather than going to the bank, mm. I'm paying directly to the seller over 5, 7, 10 years, right? Now, before you say, oh, but who gonna agree to that? <laughs> That's how M&A is done. It's not something I made up. It's just how it's been done for generations, right? And if you know how to convince, if you know your stuff, you can convince the seller of why it's a better opportunity for them. I'll, I'll sum it up really quick. If you, I, a question that I ask every seller is, uh, what's more important to you? More cash up front right now or saving on your taxes, mm -hmm. your tax liability on that cash? And then they'll say, oh, wow, I, I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. They're going to take out like 30% or more in capital gains tax. Mm -hmm. All right, well, guess what? If you carry a note, seller financing, it's, a, it's in essence a loan to mm -hmm. me, right? So when you're getting a loan repaid, there's no taxes on that. Mm -hmm. Now, if you charge me interest, they're going to charge you taxes on the interest, of course, but there's no taxes on it. So if you gave me 100% seller financing mm -hmm. and just paid you over five, seven years, 
you don't got to pay no capital gains tax. Mm. They're like, what? That's wow. amazing. Okay. That's so, a big gem right mm. there. So that's too simple now. That's too yeah. simple. I'm going to make it more complicated. All right, cool. I like that. But I, I still need some cash up front. Uh, how about I'll give you 50% seller finance and, and 50% cash up front? Okay, that sounds good. Now, I'm going to look and say, all right, well, uh, I would like to do something called DDP. Deferred down payment. Deferred down payment means I take over your business today, yeah. but I pay you the down payment, the remaining 500000 mm -hmm. over, say, 90 days, right? Mm -hmm. 30, 60, 90 days. All right, cool. So they agree to that. I signed the, We signed the purchase agreement. I come in. I own it day one. Day two, now, mind you, there's a very key part of this that uh, I have to explain, and it's the difference between an asset um, purchase and a stock purchase. I'll explain it in a second. Okay. But overall, the stock purchase means I get the entity too. Okay. Not just the assets of the business, but the actual corporate entity, the LLC, the, Inc., the, the, the corp, whatever it may be. Yep. Now, if I do this, it comes with the business history. Hmm. I know people who be talking about, hey, you could get a, a what do they call Aged, those things? Uh, um, shelf Corp. Yeah, yeah, Shelf Corp. Shelf Corp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. F shelf Corps, mm. I'm going to get a quote unquote Shelf Corp that is actually cash flowing, mm. right? So it comes with the history. Now I could go on, I, I take over day one, day two, let's say I go to a fintech bank. Fintech mm. means financial technology bank, right? Fintech banks typically help you to lend, they lend to you based on the revenue. Mm. Not based on my credit, right. not based on the business credit either. Right. So they're based on revenue. They're going to say, oh, wow, we see you've been running 200000 a month through mm. uh, 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 gross, not even profit. Mm -hmm. they, they're concerned on how much you just run in through the bank, not mm. how much you keep it. Right. You've been running 200000 a month through the, th th through the bank? We'll give you a $200,000 loan and then take out 5, 10, 15, 20% out of every transaction going forward until it's paid off. Mm. But who paying that off? Yeah. The business. Who paying the seller financing to the, to the seller each month? The business, right. no money coming out of my pocket, right? So now, I, because of the cash flow in the business, through a revenue-based financing loan from a fintech institution, I'm able to get some money and I take that 200000 and give it to the seller. Mm. So now we've covered 700000 of the million, mm. right? Okay, what else? I'm stacking the deal right. with multiple things. Right. What am I stacking like I with I take now? my hat off. <laughs> <laughs> you can spicy up your hat. Listen, yeah, listen. Yeah. So what, what else? Um, I know a couple hundred ways of stacking a deal, but yeah. I'll throw a couple more out. Let's say um, this happened to me multiple times. This, the broker, the seller told me this is the numbers. Mm. I'm doing financial due diligence and we find out, wait a minute, what happened last year? You took a, di a dip. It's mm. not common yeah. from all of your other years. Oh, this happened because of that. My grandmother died and I was really out of you know, pocket with my mind and we just took a dip. But you see that we, we're building back up again. It's, mm. The revenue's coming in good. Understand. I'm sorry for your loss. And, but as a businessman, I'm going to have to ask for an earnout. Mm. An earnout means your business is actually worth 900000 not mm. a million because of what dipped. Right. But I'm willing to say I'll give you the million, but give me 12 months. Let me see that uh, these metrics are met, this performance-based metric is met, mm -hmm. and then you get your 10% extra. Mm. If not, then you don't get it because mm. it was really valued at 900. Right. They agreed to it. Now I've just carved out another 10% that I don't got to pay right now. Even if I do have to pay it after 12 months, who's paying it? Right. The, the business. business. Right. Right. So you see how I'm just stacking the deal with yeah. multiple things till it gets to zero. Right now we just covered 800, but I could keep going, but yeah. for sake of time, I won't. Yeah. But I just stack the deal with multiple strategies, creative strategies to get the business down to zero out of my pocket. And here's the kicker. I just gave you a $1 million um, example. The business costs 1 million. Mm -hmm. It's easier to do this with a 20 million, wow. a 50 million, a one billion dollar company than it is to do it with that one million dollar company, wow. right? And and the reason why, so. why yeah, yeah, yeah. the reason why is because that one million dollar company is probably owned by a mom and pop. You know, they just trying to retire or something, and they need to get out. I just need some cash, man. I need some cash. The 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 fifty million dollar company doesn't expect you to come with $50 million cash in your pocket. Mm. They, they're used to and expect deal structure. Mm. So that means they're going to say, hey, here's a way you can structure the deal. They'll give you a structure, and then you could just modify it and negotiate, right? So it's easier to do the bigger deals for sure in the same concept. Wow. And I, and I, and I love that because I think that, you know, this particular concept is just sort of like obliterated the whole concept of having to have, you know, money, right? Mm -hmm. In order mm -hmm. to like, like, you know, it take money to make money kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you have to have some money, right? Yeah. So you can't yeah. do it, no money. 
But like, what what's the criteria though, right? Like, can you know? Can do you have to be like? I know I know like in the investment world, uh, there's some there's certain investments that you just don't even have access to. Like, you have to be a sophisticated investor to even get mm -hmm. access to certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a level of um, is there a criteria? Is there a mm -hmm. rule? Like, yeah. what does it take for somebody to buy a business? They know all this knowledge. They're part of your program. They're like, I bet, yo, I, you know, I learned from bees. You know, I'm ready to do my first leverage buyout. Um, is it that? Is it that simple? Is it? Is it? Is it more credentials needed? Technically, it is that simple. Mm. However, for example, in my community, I have, I think, I think, and I hope she don't get mad at me, but I think Granny T is like 67 or something. Um, and then on the other end of the spectrum, I got like Ashan, who I, I know you know Ashan. Mm -hmm. Ashan is like 20 mm -hmm. and he's learning to do it. Mm -hmm. So imagine someone that's like a, a 20 year old going and saying, I'm gonna acquire this baby boomers business. The mm -hmm. baby boomer might be like, I'm mm -hmm. gonna get, you to, get my business to right. this kid, blah, blah, blah. But there's ways around it too. Maybe he says, you know who his father is. So mm -hmm. maybe he tells his father to be the face of the acquisition, although Ashan knows how to actually get it done. Right. So he, he controls it, he runs it, but his father is the, uh, uh, the face right. and then you get through, right? So what you were describing is like an accredited investor and you have to, there's rules, uh, uh, criteria to be an accredited investor. You don't need it. Yeah. The only requirement that I'm going to say that you need is one, the ability to have a conversation with somebody. Mm. There's a lot, and that sounds weird, but a lot of people are scared to do that, right. to have a conversation, to build rapport with someone, right? right? Two is do you want to be an entrepreneur? If you mm. want to be an entrepreneur and are willing to, because you know, there's a lot of things that go come with it. Facts. People see all the glitz and the glam, but we go through a whole lot of crap, 100%. right? But if you're willing and able to, to persist through that, then yeah, you can acquire a business using an LBO, yeah. right? Because there's no requirement, especially when we avoid the SBA and avoid, you know, um, any of the uh, more formal aspects of it. There's no requirement at all. But you have to be willing to be a, an entrepreneur, a business person. If you're not going to be successful as an entrepreneur, you might not be successful taking over a business, but you'd have a greater chance of success because they, they have the recipe for you. They have the playbook for you. They, the business has been operating for multi, multiple decades, yeah. and they got through recessions and up and down, and they have it all laid out on how they make money. Mm. Now you just come in and be creative and do a little, little couple, of, couple of little things. Imagine you acquire a business from a baby boomer who cash flow been great, but they don't know nothing about social media. Right. They don't know nothing about funnels. Right. They don't know nothing about a sales team. They right. just been word of mouth and all of that. So you could come in and do these little things and, and, and improve the business right away. Yeah. It's the best opportunity for someone who is serious about becoming a business owner and they thought they had to build it from scratch. Yep. Nah, you can acquire it. Yeah, and 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 you know, I talk about this all the time, right? So I, I started my career uh, as a banker, um, and you know, in my twenties, uh, my early or my mid mid twenties, um, I had the opportunity to become a branch manager, um, and I manage um, about five branches for a large, one of the largest financial institutions in the world. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't realize at the time, similar to your, to your Microsoft story, what I didn't realize at the time was that I was, be, you know, mm -hmm. I was being paid pennies on the dollar, mm. right? Where like literally, um, you know, you know, they were tasking me with sales and marketing and building up a, a brand and yeah. making sure that that brand is profitable. Then before I could reap the benefits of that labor, uh, they were, you know, moving me around, moving me around. And I, I too had that epiphany that said, wow, if I could do this for, for, for this bank, mm. I could probably do it for myself as well, right? And so when you think about uh, leverage buyouts, and this is this is specifically to my insiders out there who are, you know, you're professional, you're working at nine to five, you're mid manager, you know, mid you know, mid-level manager, mm -hmm. you're making the six figures, you know, do, doing what Bees is talking about uh, is really you already have sort of like that skill set, yes. right? You have yes. the skill set. You've been doing it for multinational businesses for years. Mm. Now it's time to do it for yourself. And so for that person who wants to do it for themselves, who, who, who wants to start acquiring businesses, how do you know what is a good deal and what is a bad deal? Ooh, good question. So 
you can see what's a good looking deal, mm. right? And good looking deal is you, you got to understand the numbers, right? Now, here's the, here's the funny thing. Whenever I start talking about this, this portion of it, and I start talking about EBITDA, SDE, mm. uh, P&Ls, a lot of people are like, wow, man, that's amazing, Bees. You're a genius. Mm. It's, I don't think I could you know, do all of that. I'm just going to start a business from scratch instead. P&Ls, even right. the SDE is not an a acquisition-specific right. terminology. Right. If you're going to start a business from scratch and you don't want to know about your numbers, right. you don't want to know your profit and loss statement, right, right. that's the reason why 80% or more businesses that start up from scratch are gone in five years. Mm -hmm. right? So overall, these are the things that we need to know. So you could uh, identify a good-looking deal by the industry. Yeah. What's the potential in the industry? right? You could. I just acquired a... Um, I guess I could say this now. I just acquired a, a RV dealership yep. and I'm doing a roll up with it and acquiring more uh, recreational vehicles, not just the big RVs that you drive, but boats and other things. Nice. And I don't know nothing about that, but I looked into the industry and I was like, okay, the industry is booming, especially because the baby boomers are all retiring this decade mm. and they love RVs Absolutely. for some reason. <laughs> they want to drive around the country and they love, if they buy an RV, I also want to get a boat and tow it around too. Mm. So guess what? I'm going to acquire some marine dealerships underneath it too and just grow the overall um, portfolio. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have that, that I'm fulfilling the need of the industry that exists already. Mm -hmm. So you can look at the numbers and look at the industry and determine if it's a good looking deal. But you will not know if it's a good deal until you get into full due diligence. Mm -hmm. So the, the, there's phases of the acquisition. And once you get to making an actual offer, and have your deal structure. Now you sign something called a LOI, a mm -hmm. letter of intent, and now you're doing your full due diligence, mm -hmm. legal due diligence, financial due diligence, people due, due diligence, industry due diligence, right? Then is when you confirm that it's an actual good deal. So mm -hmm. I, I had to be clear on that because yeah. I don't want anybody to be like, hey, this looks good. Because you know what's happening right now? There are more people talking about business acquisitions now. I'm, I'm happy about that. I, I like to say I contributed right. to more people right, talking right, about right, it. Right, right. But for ex I, I used to make this example a lot. Um, a great business to acquire is like a, a laundromat, a car wash, mm -hmm. a, a tow truck company, a, a pest control company. Why? Because they're boring businesses. You, you don't have to be involved in it. I ain't going to drive the tow truck myself, right? right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I ain't going around spraying people's houses. But you got employees that can run without you. But I, I feel that because everybody thinks that that's the only thing to acquire. Right. Now everybody's going after laundromats and the, the, the brokers are raising the price and asking, you know, crazy stuff. So, you know, you could focus on any type of business. Things that you wouldn't, you know, the, the, the knob right here on the mic mm. probably got a manufacturer that makes just that knob itself. Right. And they, they pulling in $2 million in uh, EBITDA each year. Mm. I'll take that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It doesn't matter. So it's industry agnostic. It's all about the acquisition and all about how you structure the deal overall. Yeah, yeah. And 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 so, yeah, I love that. And and when, when I think about um, this, all of what you're just saying, right? I know there's somebody skeptical right now. Of course. I know there's somebody saying, man, he making it sound so, so simple. Um, mm. What mindset shift? Mm is necessary in order to be successful in M&A and, and, and mm. this, this strategy, you know, all together? So first thing I'm going to say is the mindset shift of 25% of a watermelon is better than 100% of a grape. Hmm. Right? Okay. Now, I own equity in over 20 companies. I don't work in none of them. Well, I work in two of them. One is the BBI. That's where I teach how to do it. Mm. And Capital B's is the one that is my actual acquisition arm. So I, I do work in that. But I don't work in none of the rest of them, yeah. right? So that's the first thing is 25% of a watermelon is better than 100% of a grape because when you're doing these acquisitions, most people are going to be thinking, nah, I just want it all for myself. Mm -hmm. But if you're willing to give up some equity, it's going to give you more power, more leverage overall. Mm -hmm. But then the next big thing about that is when people are hesitant and they're like, I don't know about this. So there's another saying that I have. I don't... I, <laughs> Now, when I say this, you're going to know some, some of your friends, some of my friends that say this a lot, but I don't like dealing with plays. Mm. I don't like how the communi our community talks about, yo, we could run this play. Yeah. Yo, I got this play for you. Yeah. Yo, I got this play. All of that. Because yeah. plays get played out. Mm. Plays are temporary. Plays mm. are the, hey, you can make a quick bag, mm. but the bag might be lost even quicker. Right. Right? 
I only go for sustainable strategies. Mm. For those who think, oh man, bees, you just created something that it sounds great, but it can't work. It can't be. Right. This has been going on for generations. Generations, facts. For generations. And right. the fact that Ash started by mentioning uh, Reginald Lewis. Right. I mean, that should be alone enough uh, proof that- When I was a that, teenager yo, though, too. When I was a teenager. Right. Proof that we can do it. Yeah. Right? But here's a fact. Because I'm going for sustainable strategies. Yeah. If the government ever said, man, bees is teaching too much people how to do these LBOs. We're going to have to change the rules. We, we can't let this happen no more. Yeah. I don't even have to fight the battle. Right. Warren Buffett going to fight the battle on my behalf. Mm. Uh, uh, who bought um, uh, Elon Musk. Right. He just bought Twitter using a leverage buyout. Mm. He going to fight the battle on my behalf. Jeff Bezos going to fight the battle on my behalf. Mm. The wealthy, they going to fight that battle for me because they'll never let that change because mm. it's been going on for generations. Yeah. So you can feel scared, but don't think that it's not possible because I, I could give you a billion examples of it being done yeah. by anybody. Yeah. So why can't it be you too? Yeah. And I, and I, you know, and I didn't even real. I mean, I, I realized it, but now that you said it, it's like, we watch this in our face. Yes. We watch Elon Musk um, drive the value of Twitter down, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like he strategically drive the value of Twitter down, was able to acquire this business. So he always wanted to be, and I, I, I actually Media. think it's a bigger play. Right, mm. I think it's a bigger play that we don't we don't we don't fully know yet, mm. but because 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 there's always billionaires or you know a lot of billionaires always get into the media space for some yep. reason. Yep. Control like people don't media. know Je Jeff Bezos owns Washington Post. Oh yeah. Right. Oh, so yeah. a lot of them get into the media space. Like it's it's like that's that's the billionaire toolkit. Oh, yeah. Right, like if you want, like Control like like Byron Allen, Allen, the, the Weather Channel, yes. like like they, they, there's this there's this you know tool toolkit mm. that you have to have a media company. Mm. But we watched it. We watched Elon Musk, mm. right? You know, get into that leverage buyout by you know having this brand, using who he is, mm. uh, you know, getting the deal done, and then and then once he got it. He was, you know, he branded it. Now it's not mm. Twitter anymore. Now X. it's X. Yeah. And now he's doing certain things with it. But we've plan. seen that, you know, that that leverage buyout. We like we 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 seen that happen. Um, what is the first step? Mm. Right? Somebody if somebody wants to buy their first building. Mm. Or like, 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 or you know, I'll I'll so let, I'll give you even one better. I'll give you a case study. Um, you know, I am a 60 year old man mm. um, and I've always wanted to get into the restaurant business okay and I say to myself you know for whatever reasons I was under the impression that I need money to to get into the restaurant business mm. Mm. and so for the last 40 years of my life right You've been trying to build up that I've money. been building up that money I, I, I you know I, I've been trying to build up that money build up that money build up that money mm. but as we know life keeps life in. Mm. Every time I build it up, something happens. Every yeah. time, right? Something happens. And so, and then things are getting even more expensive. Inflation. There's so much happening around me, but I still, that I don't want, I don't want that dream to die, right? Yeah. I want to be a restaurant owner. Um, and, I, and, 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 and based on what you told me, I want you to help me. Mm. What is my first step? So the first step, I'm going to say join the BBI because you can learn it all, yes, right? But, but the first step for anybody is, um, you want to go to like, like an online broker site to start because you want to start. You already took the first step. Yeah. The first step is defining your acquisition criteria. Mm. I promise you, I promise y'all, when you start looking into this, you're going to feel like a kid in a candy store. Mm. It's the greatest wealth transfer in history happening right now with baby boomers mm. that are aging out of their business and have no succession plan. Excellent. Right. So we could take over those businesses. But now you've defined your criteria. I'm only looking at restaurants. I'm only looking in these states. Mm -hmm. I'm only looking at this uh, top line revenue or valuation of the business, whatever. You're going to go to a site like bizbuysell.com, B-I-Z-B-U-Y-S-E-L-L.com. Or there are, Biz Buy Sell is like very uh, uh, generic. You can find any business on mm -hmm. there. But there's like a thousand other online broker sites that are very specific. 
I think restaurantsforsale.net. Mm. I think it's with a number four, number four. Yeah, I've forsale.net. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's one that you would go to. There's another one, restaurants-for-sale-global.com, mm. so, something like that. Yeah. I may be a little bit off on the URL, but you could go to those specifically because those focus on uh, restaurants, right? Yeah. Next step, you just, you, you're you looking, you find one, and you're like, oh, this looks interesting. Looks interesting. Right. We can't tell for sure if it's a good deal right. until later. You request some information. You can't send an email send or a phone call, whatever, and send it to the broker and say, hey, I'm interested in your business. They're going to send you an NDA to sign, mm. non-disclosure agreement. You sign it so that you don't disclose any of the financial information that you're going to be privy to. Privy to. Um, now you're going to get something called a SIM, C-I-M. Sometimes it's called a CBR. But SIM means Confidential Information Memorandum. CBR mm. is Confidential Business Review or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's just a summary of everything in the business. Not every single thing, but just a summary and the highlights of the financials. Now you look at that and you're like, yeah, this looks like it's good. If everything you're telling me here is true, mm. this looks good. I'm going to do my due diligence mm -hmm. later, but this looks good. Let me meet with the seller now. Talk to the seller. Build rapport. That's more important than anything. Mm. More important than the financials, more important than everything is building rapport with the seller. Get that seller to want you to be the next owner. Mm. Right? And I say it's more important than the financials because as long as he wants you, mm. even if the financials are proven to be a little bit wrong from mm. what they originally told you, you're, you're able to renegotiate the deal right. and they still want you. Right. You know? So that's literally it. Mm. You, you, now you get into your due diligence. Then you sign a purchase agreement, then you take over, and it's as simple as that. Of right. course, there's some nuances in there, like, yeah. well, who's going to run it? Uh, maybe look at the, the, the key employees in there, maybe elevate one to be a COO or something. Uh, another question that a lot of people ask me is, yeah, but where am I even going to find like a CEO to hire? Mm. I mean, where did you get hired? Right. What, what job boards did you post your resume on when right. you were in your nine to five? Right. Indeed. Uh, LinkedIn. Right. Monster. Does Monster still exist? I think so. I, 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 I was thinking, look, I've, I've been permanently unemployed for over you know a decade, I mean? so I, you know what I mean? So but Monster, yeah. I think. Yeah. Those type of things, and yeah. then you hire, you hire that Ivy League graduate yeah. to come in and run your business. You don't got to be the Ivy League yeah. graduate. Yeah, and, and, and in that particular scenario, right, this person wouldn't need money. Nope. nope. Right, because if they find the right deal... They could negotiate, right? Like what you mentioned before, they could stack the deal in order to to, to own that restaurant. Now their dream has been fulfilled, hundred percent, without having to wait, without yeah. having to, uh, you know, you know, you know, get family and friends together to to, 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 to bring the money up. Now, now here I'm gonna tell you this though, right? Uh, when I was in high school, I remember to this day I still talk about this too. Um, I was walking around the the. Um, when, when I would go to the mall with like my friends and we walking around and we kicking it to girls and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I'd have like this one guy. He's like, nah, I'm not going to talk to her. I'm only going to talk to a 10. And then we could see one person, one girl that was a 10. And he's like, okay, I'm going to talk to her. And then he didn't get her number. Mm. I talked to like 40. Mm. And like, I'm just playing the numbers because yeah, yeah. I talked to 40. I got two numbers. Right. I'm cool with right. it. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. So I take that same concept. Mm. With businesses right now. I love that. Right? Yeah. So some people is like, oh, I called one business and they didn't want to do, you know, the deal structure. It didn't work. One? Right. That's it? Right. One? Right. Now, I, if I talk to 20, maybe I get two or three completely zero out of my pocket. No cash, no credit, nothing. Yeah. But let's say I had, I don't know, 10% of the buying price of a business. Maybe instead of two or three, I got four or five now because I put 10% down and did some other stuff. Yeah. Let's say I had 80%. Now I get, you know, 10 or 12 of the 20 businesses. Yeah. So you got to put in the work. You got to put in the repetitions. But let me ask you, Ash, would you be willing to speak to 20 people to get two multi-million dollar businesses? Heartbeat. Heartbeat. 100 people, 200 100 people, people, whatever. Exactly. Yeah. To get two multi-million dollar That's not businesses. even like... I talk, I talk to 200 people for free. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But people are afraid of putting in that rep, putting yeah. in them um, uh, the, the, the time. Right. Uh, in my community, sometimes I'll show, with, with permission of like the broker, I'll show a recording of how I, how I navigated the conversation. And people love that because they're like, oh, okay, now I see how it could be done. Yeah. Yes, but don't think that that's, everything I said is the exact words you must say every single time. Right. 
You just have to be able to answer questions and you have to be able to articulate what you would like to, to, to see happen yeah. and you have to be able to build a rapport. Yeah. However, which way you go about it, here's one example, but yes, you still have to make it your own overall. Yeah. And, and you know, I think that, you know, one of the things that people are, um, I, I guess, I, I want to say enamored or afraid of um, is that, you know, you don't know what you don't know, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, again, for, for a lot of people, this might be the first time they've ever heard um, buy a business. about buying a business, right? Mm -hmm. And so- Much less the LBO part, Exactly, right, right, yeah. right? Leverage buyout, like this is the first time they hear about that. They might they might be on Google right now, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to Google some stuff. But talk talk a little bit about your community because I think that, um, you, know, you know, I've always been a fan of, um, you know, mentorship. Mm. Um, I think that mentorship is 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 a is a cheat code. Mm. Uh, if anybody wants to be successful, um, instead of trying to figure things out for yourself, find somebody who's already done it, yeah. um, who's doing it. Um, pay them whatever they ask, and then learn that thing and do it. Yeah. Do it right. Yeah. And so I am a mentor, but I'm also a mentee. Yeah. And the only reason I and, and and I don't call myself a good mentor. These are my students who are saying, Ash, man, you're one of the best mentors. The reason why they say that is because I pride myself on being a good student. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, talk a little bit about your, your you know, BBI yeah. um, and, you know, what, you know, the value of it and what do people get being yeah. inside of your program? And I love that you said that too, being a mentee as well as a mentor. That's me too, yeah. right? Um, I have some friends, some some similar friends between you and I, mm -hmm. and they'll always be like, damn, you only charging that and you gonna meet with them forever? Yeah. I'm like, why not? Because I'm doing this forever. Yeah. Every day I'm doing it. Every week I got something new to talk about. Every week I'm learning something new. Yeah. When I first learned that I could as uh, uh, assume the uh, an EDI, e was it? the EIDL loans, mm -hmm. right? So when somebody's selling a business, um, they're supposed to sell it to you debt free, mm -hmm. right? But I was in a situation where someone had a five hundred thousand dollar EIDL loan, mm -hmm. and they were like, "Well, you know, this is why I need the cash to pay it off um, first and stuff." But it will be paid off before I sell it to you. I was like, "Well, no, don't pay it off. Mm. Let me assume it." Mm. So let's go back to that one million dollar uh, example. If it was one million and they had five hundred thousand dollar loan, I'd be like, "Let me assume it." Now the price drops by five hundred thousand mm. because I'm gonna take that loan. Why would I take it? Well. One, because it dropped the price for me. Right. Two, because EIDL loan had the best terms, the best ah. repayment terms, the best interest rates, all of that. So, yeah, mm. I'll take that and pay that off. The business will pay that off. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, Regin. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know? Right? So, you're saying, and I just want to be clear, mm -hmm. you're saying, we went back to the example of the million dollar loan, the yeah. million dollar business. Somebody's selling a business for a million dollars. Mm -hmm. The reason why they want a million dollars is because they want, five, they have a loan that they owe 500,000 to. Mm -hmm. They want to pay off that 500,000, like once you give them that, that million dollars, they're going to take that $500,000, pay off that loan, mm -hmm. and let's say come back with $500,000 in cash or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. Well, because you're buying the business, you could say, you know what? Instead of you know me buying the business for a million, I'll assume that five hundred thousand dollar loan, mm -hmm. and so now it's, it's not your responsibility anymore. It's the business's this responsibility, business, which you now control, which I now control, and so now I have to come up with five hundred. So now in that million dollar price. Just, oh. <laughs> Stacking the deal with multiple things. Oh. But, but going back to your original question about the community. Um, so the BBI, Business Builders Institute, um, it's not just like a course or something. It's, it's more so an investment club because mm -hmm. we're doing deals together, investing together. Um, obviously, yes, there's the education aspect. But we powerful. I got my community members going out and finding different investment bankers and bringing them back to me. And then I'm vetting them and then say, hey, now we got leverage and we could use them for larger deals and things like that. Wow. Um, we also have two curriculums in it. The Empire Builders curriculum, because mm -hmm. we're building an empire through acquisitions. Mm -hmm. That's all about business acquisitions. And the Business Builders curriculum, that's all about whether you start one from scratch or whether you acquire it, how do you now scale it? Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, the two curriculums in the BBI um, we meet every week 
to talk about, and they can't get me. I know you're about to be like, bees. We've been, I don't even know how long we've been talking right now, but <laughs> right. I could go on for another day. Right. <laughs> so, you know, we meet uh, uh, twice a week, each week. Uh, one is called an accountability session. Uh, the accountability session is like a study session. They come together and they're doing things and comparing notes. And then the roundtable session is on Tuesday nights. And that's where I bring newer things and elaborate on stuff that we've already gone over and show any new thing that I learned and, you know, teach to the community. But, yeah, it's a powerful thing, man. Wow. It's, it's, you could go to college or you come to BBI. Yeah. You could learn from a professor talking about business who never actually ran a business himself. Or you get that practical information in the BBI. So my goal is to have it accredited to eventually make it an actual institution of learning nice. that people could come to. And you're going to acquire. You're going to acquire. There you go. Actually, I told you, a story, I don't know if I said it on here when we were behind the scenes. I told yeah. you a story of one of my com uh, community members. He purchased a college. Mm. And he purchased the college. And I was like, what? A co I, didn't even, I didn't even think that you could purchase a right, college. Right. But he purchased a college. It was in distress because 2020 didn't shift to the online courses and stuff. Yep. And I was like, ah, but you know, I don't like distressed businesses. That's like startup again. Right. He was like, yeah, but bees, I'm a real estate expert. Right. So I purchased it because of the real estate that the, the, the college owned. Mm. It has some solar farm and this and that. Mm. So now he's using that real estate for other things, right. leveraging the real estate to pay for some other acquisitions mm. of businesses as well. Yeah, you know, It's powerful, man. Wow. So wow. overall, that's the BBI, the Business Builders Institute. Um, we talk about everything related to acquisitions and entrepreneurship right. and financial literacy. We talk about, we just had uh, my guy, Brother Truth, on there the other day talking about um, uh, 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 trusts yeah. and how to utilize trusts better, not only to reclaim your who you really are, that's a whole other level of it, but then there's just the asset protection that you yeah. get from trust, which yeah. is extremely important as well. Yeah, no, nah, I'm about to, I'm about to join BBI myself. <laughs> One one thing I wanted to 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 go back to, and you said this, and I and I don't want anybody to miss this. You said that right now we're going through one of the biggest mm. wealth transfer of our time, mm. and in going through one of those wealth transfers, you you said that it's because we have a lot of baby boomers mm -hmm. who are business owners who are. In the, in the space where they're trying to retire, they're ready to stop doing what they're doing, mm. and they do not have a succession plan. So they have not, so while they were on the grind and they were building up their business and they got the 40 acres and the mules mm. and, you know, building up this this fancy, you know, this, this build business that's worth a lot of money, um, they were putting their kids through these different schools or whatever they were doing with their kids, but their kids were were not and are not interested in the business. Mm -hmm. And so now we have a lot of these businesses that are um, ready yeah. for somebody to take over. Which 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 also I'm I'm almost answering my question myself <laughs> because because my question is like. You know, or, or or I know somebody who's watching has this question. I know the answer, but yeah. I know somebody, you know, who, who's watching has the answer. Like, well, that doesn't make sense. Why would somebody sell, sell a business, a business that's, that's cash flowing? Yeah, yeah, I, I get that question a lot too. Yeah. Um, uh, so first and foremost, um, as I mentioned, I'm Jamaican, and um, growing up, my mom had a china cabinet. And I'm not sure if this is a Jamaican only thing, a Caribbean only thing or not, but had a china cabinet with fine china in it, yep. like plates and silverware. You could not nobody. Touch. Oh, you know, you know. Look, look so let me just. <laughs> so I'm Haitian. <laughs> but that's right. Which, 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 which so means I'm, a, I'm an honorary Jamaican. Yeah, right? That's exactly. Daddy Bookman. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. couldn't touch it. Yes, sir. So my mom's was always like, "Oh, when I'm gone, that's gonna be yours." Yeah. Like I don't want it. <laughs> like, well, thank you. Right. She valued it so much. Yeah. I didn't want it. Right. And apparently, that's the same thing that happened right now. Yeah. The current generations, I don't even know what it's called. X, Y, Z, baby. I, I don't okay. know. What, I don't, I don't even know what generation baby. I am. Uh, X? I don't know what. The, I don't yeah. know. The, but yeah. these generations don't want it. They're yeah. like, nah, I want to be a TikToker instead yeah. or whatever. So there's not enough people to even buy a business because mm -hmm. most people don't know you can buy mm -hmm. one. So these baby boomers have reached the point in life, all baby boomers, right. all of them are retiring this decade. Mm. They're all in their 70s and et cetera, right? Yep. So they want to come out. I, I just want to relax. I just yeah. want to spend time with family. I want to get a boat and sail the Caribbean mm. and stuff. Cool. But nobody, I had my business listed for two years and still ain't nobody buy it. Right. And when they first listed, 
oh, I'm selling it for $10 million. Yeah. And two years later, it's like uh, 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 five million, right, right, four, right, you know, right. and that's when I swoop in, mm. right? So they want to retire, they want to relax. Now they've earned that right to do yeah, so, yeah. But they just don't know. They don't want to just shut down the multi-million dollar business that right, they built, right. and that's why we can swoop in. It's the greatest wealth transfer in history because I think the statistic is something like ninety percent of the companies in the world are small businesses. Yeah. And out of that, more than two thirds of them are run by or owned by the baby boomers. Right. So all of them looking to retire, and not enough people to buy it. Mm. You have your pick of the litter. Mm. You, you it's a, literally a candy, a kid in the candy shop. Mm. It's like, oh, I want that one. I want that one. I'll take that too. Mm. Let me get two of those. Yeah. <laughs> it's just amazing. Yeah. So why miss this opportunity? There's only but so many things like this that ever happen in your lifetime, in your lifetime. any one lifetime. Right. Maybe two or three times right. in your lifetime that right. something huge happens yeah. that you know, you're gonna be like, damn, I wish I took advantage of it back right. then. Right. right. Mind you, I'm gonna tell you right now, M&A ain't never gonna go nowhere. Right. So you could, you want to wait? It's to actually wait. baked in the the constitution. It is the 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 the, the, structure, the structure, the actual country that you live in, <laughs> the, the the corporation, the corporation that, that you we live, live in. in. Yes, right. It's yeah. baked into it, so it ain't never gonna go nowhere. Yeah. But the ease of getting it, right, from baby boomers who was retiring, right, that's happening that's this happening decade, now. and right. you don't want to miss out on it. Yeah. I just got into another roll up industry in construction. Uh, infrastructure construction. And then I, 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 was, I was talking to a guy, my guy Kev, uh, Government Cheese, mm. and he was like, he has a background in it too. And he was like, Bees, I'm going to tell you, probably about a year or two, not too late, but mm. just late on the infrastructure construction. I was like, what do you mean? He was like, a lot of the private equity firms, two years ago when the bill was passed to you know, redo the roads and bridges in the US, mm -hmm. they started jumping in and acquiring all these companies to do it. Because the wealthy know mm. that business acquisitions is where it is. And wow. they know this uh, uh, um, uh, wealth transfer that's happening, right? So we got to get our piece of this too. Yeah. And I mean, if you, you're comfortable, you just want to acquire one business. Cool. Yeah. Two, three. Cool. You don't have to make a business of acquiring businesses yeah. like I did. Yeah. Yeah. But if you do do that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you want to pad to billions nah, for sure. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Man, I love this, man. We could keep talking yeah, forever know, and ever I and ever. <laughs> um, but I, I'm sure people want to learn how to join BBI and for you sure. know where to find you. So if somebody was interested uh, in you know joining your institution, mm -hmm. you know wh 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 where can they go? So the Business Builders Institute, you could go to businessbuildersinstitute.com or you could come check out me on Instagram, uh, Business Builder. Bees, and that's B-E-E-Z. Um, I'm on Instagram. My full name is Bjorn Bees Hendricks. Uh, but I also say check me out on LinkedIn, mm. right? That's another thing. If you're learning from a mentor and they don't have a, a background yeah. like Ash, right? He actually did this in corporate America for large companies and then did it for himself and others. Yeah. If you don't have a mentor that has that background and they just kind of figured out something and it's like, okay, I'm going to teach it now. That's, it could work. It's cool. But at least you see my background, you see my, my tenure at Microsoft, at Accenture and other firms and what I did then. Uh, but Instagram is the place that you could really connect with me for sure. And, uh, you know, join the BBI. Uh, we got multiple tiers to come in at. Uh, but overall, you won't go wrong because you'll, you'll have the right business tribe with you to carry you through your acquisitions. All right, y'all. Leverage this information. <laughs> Leverage the buyout. Um, you know, your road to multi-millions, your road to a billion, your road to having that financial freedom that you've always desired is just information away, mm. right? So it's information and then implementation, execution. right? You, right? You, you, have to, you have to get the information first, then you have to execute on that information. While you're executing on that information, there, there's times you're gonna get stuck. And so why not get that mentor, you know, you know learn from those who have done it before. Um, this is a powerful episode, y'all. Mm. I need y'all to rewind this. There's a lot of gems that he dropped. I need you to rewind. I need you to listen. I need you to embrain, you know, ingrain this in your brain. Mm. Understand that the days of hustling are over. But, mm. right, in order to have, a, you know, have an opportunity of a lifetime, you have to take advantage of it during the lifetime of that opportunity, Ooh. right? And so when you sure. think about the baby boomers, 
Um, there, there is literally like I have friends, we have friends that have made multi millions of dollars during this, uh, you know, wealth transfer. Uh, it is not, you know, you know there's, there's a window for it, so you want to take advantage of it. Um, and what better way to take advantage of it by taking advantage uh, by leveraging other people's money, learning how to do that. Become a CEO, uh, and, you know, and and, and, and excuse me, yeah, right, I was about to say, <laughs> but not even a CEO. Become an investor, so that way you don't have to be the CEO. Mm. You can literally, you know, have have you know, build money, have wealth without you having to do everything. So, mm. we are closing out the vault again. Another powerful episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. I need you to go follow us everywhere at Inside the Vault. Go to our website, subscribe to our page, InsideTheVaultTV.com. Also, you can follow me everywhere. I am AshCash.com. Follow me on all social media platforms at I am Ash Cash. Listen, I also need you to join the Abundance community, right? Abundance is your birthright. Uh, we got we got Bjorn uh, in the background, Bees is giving you all of behind the scenes stuff that he ain't even talk about on this show. So make sure you tap in abundancecommunity.org. And we're going to see you. I thank you, as, as always, uh, for allowing us to pour into you, for us to pour into your vault as you get inside our vault. Uh, but we'll see you next time in God's will. All right, y'all. Peace.